Uh, the Rose Cross, welcome. I've been meaning to speak about Rosicrucians for some time. Not least when talking about the New Age, I've suggested that Theosophy is really its beginning. But I also said that I could have chosen Rosicrucianism. I said the word isn't there, and Tobias Churton, who I hold in very high regard, um, has reminded me not to use the word, put, the, put ism on the end of Rosicrucian. I think I do it another couple of times in this vlog, so I apologise. Yes, you see, I've just listened to Bar Tobias Churton speaking about Rosicrucians on What Magic Is This? Now, I've said before, what, what Magic Is This? is one of my favourite channels. Uh, but Tobias Churton something of an expert on Rosicrucians even though his views on them are, are maybe somewhat challenging, uh, claiming that much that we know about Rosicrucians is a myth. The myth, uh, between 1614 and 1617, three anonymous manifestos were published, first in Germany and later throughout Europe. These were the Pharma Fraternities RC, the fame of the Brotherhood RC in 16, uh, 1614, Confessio Fraternis, the Confessions of the Brotherhood of the RC, 1615, and the Chemical Reading of Christian Rosenkreuz, um, Anno, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, Anno, Anno 1459, which was published in 1617. Uh, the Frama Fraternitis presents the legend of the German doctor and mystical philosopher, referred to as Father Bar Brother CRC, later identified in a third manifesto as Christian Rosenkreuz, um, the Rose Cross. But is this idea that RC actually equals Rose Cross reliable? Thomas Churton casts doubt on it. The year 1378 is presented as the birth year of our, our Christian father and is the story of Christian Rosenkrauss, the German monk. He, in his trip to the Holy Round Land around 1400, encountered a secret society of wise men in Tabat, T Damascus, although Tobias claims that this was Yemen and it's due to the misinterpretation of the name Damkar. And that makes much more sense to me. Uh, by acquiring the secret knowledge of the East, he gained initiation and travelled to Egypt, Morocco, Spain, and finally back to Germany. In Fez, I was going to say then a centre for philosophical and occultist studies, but I think it probably still is today, such as the alchemy of Abu Abdullah, Gabir Ben Hayan, and Imad Jafri al Sadiq. The astrology and, astrology and magic of Alash Shabr Masali and the esoteric stories of Abadaraham ben Abdullah al Iskari. And did Christian Rosenkreuz actually exist? There's no evidence that he did. Indeed, <laughs> there are even suggestions that he was actually the Comte Saint Germain. See my vlog on Interview with a Vampire to find out more about this character. Uh, Thomas Churton actually shows that the farmer was written by a group of Lutheran scholars at Tübingen. Uh, could he actually have been Paracelsus? Certainly some of the ideas contained in these documents are similar to those of Paracelsus himself. Or even Giordano Bruno. The, the Dominican friar and occultist, which would provide a link to Sir Francis Bacon and Sir John Dee, whom certainly were Rosicrucians. This also links them to theories about the true author of Shakespeare's plays. Indeed, Sir Francis Bacon is said to have been behind the founder of Rosicrucians in the US in attempt to establish the new Atlantis. After studying in the Middle East under various masters, almost certainly Sufi, Rosenkreuz was unable to spread the knowledge he'd acquired due to prominent Europe, uh, two prominent European scientists and philosophers. He is said to have gathered a small circle of friends, disciples, and founded the Rosencrucian order. Uh, this can be deduced to have occurred around 1407. 
much of the knowledge he acquired from the Islamic world was related to Gnosticism and Hermeticism. According to Gnosticism, the path of salvation is through knowledge and Hermeticism, and this provides the knowledge through alchemy, astrology and theurgy. Theurgy meaning invoking gods and spirits. Uh, Realising it wasn't the right time to impart this knowledge in Europe, Rosencrantz decided to establish a secret society to hide it. He formed it with seven acolytes who were carefully hand-picked and swore oaths of secrecy. Uh, Through a principle called the Doctrine of Consumerment, they would pretend to practice their own country's religions to avoid persecution. During Rosencrantz's lifetime, the order was said to comprise of no more than eight members. Each a doctor and all bachelors of vowed virginity. Each member took an oath to heal the sick without asking for payment, to maintain a secret fellowship and to help find a replacement for himself before he died. Three six generations supposedly passed at a time when scientific, philosophical and religious freedom had grown so that the public might benefit from the Rosicrucians' knowledge. In the early 17th century, the, manif- uh, the manifestos created interest again throughout Europe by declaring, declaring the existence of a secret brotherhood of alchemists and sages who were preparing to transform the arts and sciences and religion, political and intellectual life across Europe. This coincided with the Thirty Year War in Europe, which is undoubtedly significant to this ferment. Uh, These works were reissued several times, followed by numerous pamphlets. Between 1614 and 1620, about 400 manuscripts and books were published, which discussed the the Rosicrucian documents. Uh, The peak of Rosicrucianism, there you go, I've used ism, uh, was reached when two mysterious posters appeared on the walls of Paris in 1622 within a few uh, days of each other. The first said, we, the high deputies of the high college of the Rose Croix, uh, do make our stay visible and invisibly within this city. And the second ended with the words, the thoughts attached to the real desire of the seeker will lead us to him and him to us. Rosicrucianism was later associated with Protestantism and Lutherism in particular. Or maybe this was simply the Catholic Church's concern about anything coming from Germany at the time. Certainly Rosicrucianism did present a direct challenge to the hierarchical structures of the Catholic Church. Although personally I believe that... um, The Sufi tradition is closer to that of Catholicism than Protestantism. Rosicrucianism was probably first introduced to the US in Pennsylvania in 1694 by German mystic mystic Johannes Kelpius, although I am unaware of any links to Sir Francis Bacon. In reference to the Book of Revelations, he founded a small religious order called the Society of Women in the Wilderness. Kelpius and his followers were involved in astrology, alchemy, ritual magic, and lived in poverty and chastity. After he died in 1707, the society died out. (laughs) No wonder if they were practising chastity, (laughs) although it influenced another sect that appeared in nearby Lancaster County. So this makes it almost certainly the earliest secret society in the Americas, predating Masonry. (laughs) Modern Rosicrucian organisations. Well, during the 17th century, there were several rites practised in Freemasonry based on the Renaissance universe of Hermeticism and alchemy which was created by the Rosicrucians of at least the 17th century, maybe earlier. Uh, Two Masonic rites of Rosicrucian inspiration emerged at the end of the 18th century. One was the uh, rectified Scottish rite, which was widespread in Central Europe, where there was a strong presence of the Golden and Rosy Cross. Uh, The other, the ancient and accepted Scottish rite, practised in France. 
although the change from the operative masonry to speculative masonry is unclear, other than it occurred at, between the end of the 16th century and the beginning of the 17th century. Now, you may have heard me being somewhat sceptical, even critical, of Albert Pike, an important figure in US masonry, uh, but it does seem clear that he did become a Rosicrucian. During the late 19th and 20th centuries, various groups styled themselves on Rosicrucian. Uh, the device, diverse groups who linked themselves to a Rosicrucian tradition may be grouped into three broad categories. Esoteric Christian Rosicrucian groups which profess Christ, and indeed, uh, who profess Christ. And indeed, there are Rosicrucian churches in today's Australia. A Masonic Rosicrucian groups such as Societas Rosicrucianana, and initiatory groups such as the Golden Dawn and the Ancient Mystical Order of the Rosicrucis, or AMORC. Uh, the Rose Cross has its place in the system of the Ordo Templis Orientalist. It is associated with the fifth degree, the title of which the Sovereign Prince Rose Croix and the Knight of the Pelican Eagle. The symbol of the Rosy Cross plays a substantial role within the system of Thelema, as developed by Alistair Crowley. And again, see my vlog on him. In a cosmological context, the Rose is the Nui, the, infinitive, uh, the infinitely expanded uh, goddess of the night sky, and the cross is the Hadith, the ultimately contracted atomic point. For Crowley, it was the job of the adept to identify the appropriate symbol, so to experience the mystical conjugation of opposites which leads to attainment. Rosicrucian ideas also led to the founding of the ancient mystical order of Rosicrucis in France in 1909. They maintained their beliefs date back to ancient Egyptian mysticism and were established with the aim of preserving the teachings of the universe, its nature and human inhabitants. Uh, the Societis Rosicruciana Republica America, also known as Society Rosicrucianana in Civitibus Foad, uh, Foedrabatis, established a set of uh, established by a set of Masons who received their authority in seventeen uh, in eighteen seventy eight from the Society Rosicruciana in Anglica through its uh, through through its college, or one of its colleges in York. Uh, like its British counterpart, one had to be a Mason to join this US society, and out of it grew the Society Rosicrucianana in America, which as I say founded in 1807, and this opened its doors to non-Masons. The ancient mystical order of Rosicrucis AMORC was founded in New York City in 1915 by H. Herbert Spencer, who lived from 1883 to 1939. Now, he's another colourful character, not without his controversies, who was involved in establishing a new age in the US. So, <laughs> there's many of these colourful characters around at that time. I, I'm not going to go into him in any great detail. I'm not, well, I'm not going to go into him at all. Claiming that he had learned the teachings of the Order from European Rosicrucians, Lewis attracted new members from around the world by distributing his teachings in male order lessons. He saw Egypt as the cradle, cradle of Rosicrucian wisdom and subsidised the creation of the highly acclaimed Egyptian Museum at the group's headquarters in San Jose, California. Uh, the Rosicrucian Fellowship was founded in Seattle in 1909 and it inspired the creation of other groups in, including the Lectorum Rosicrucianarum which was founded in the Netherlands in 1924 by two of Heidel's Dutch students Jan van Richtersburg and Catherine de Petri. Although closed by the Nazis it was reorganised after World War II and subsequently became a worldwide institution. Another important modern organisation is the Rosicrucian Fellowship, whose founder, Max Heidel, attended lectures in Germany by the theosophist Rudolf Steiner. After publishing purportedly secret doctrines against Steiner's wishes, 
Heidel taught a, a form of Rosicrucian is heavily influenced by theosophy. I suppose today we could say there are two distinct forms of Rosicrucianism. The Rosicrucianism Fellowship in Oceana, California, Oceanside, California, and the ancient mystical order of Rosicrucis in San Jose, California. And many, many famous people have been Rosicrucians, or at least allegedly. And I, I, I wouldn't do them justice to attempt to name them, but here are just a few. Leonardo da Vinci, Isaac Newton, Napoleon Bonaparte, Thomas Paine, George Washington, Bren, Benjamin Franklin, Abraham Lincoln, Michael Faraday, Victor Hugo, Rudyard Kipling, William Butler Yeats, Bram Stoker and Walt Disney. Uh, beliefs. In common with myself, they believe that the that creation and the, the intelligence behind the universe are unfathomable. No, no I actually say it's Allah, but you know, uh, it's the same principle. But that there are universal laws which provide a template for living our lives, and to a large degree I agree with that as well. Uh, the traditional symbol of the Rose Cross, a red rose at the centre of a golden cross, clearly has some Christian influence. Uh, but mystical apps, aspects derived from many faiths, especially the Jewish tradition of Kabbalah, are evident in many Rosicrucian writings. Uh, more elaborate renditions of the Rose Cross symbol exhibit, exhibit more complex and multi-layered symbolism, involving colours, uh, Greek, Roman and Hebrew letters, numerology, astrology and alchemical symbols. A Rosicrucianism fits in, really fits into the Gnosticism that emerged in the Mediterranean Basin in the second century. Modern day Rosicrucians will point to the Dead Sea Scrolls, which of course contain the Gnostic Gospels, as an important part of their beliefs. Uh, at times, as Manichaean or, or as Cathari, it attained significant uh, popular following and, uh, and in the late Middle Ages alchemy from Famar and Confessions it's possible to glean some definite, de definitive ideas of the occult concepts of Rosicrucians. In these doc uh, documents is including the doctrine of the microcosm which teaches that man contains the potential of the universe a belief of Paracelsus. There is also a belief that the doctrine of elementary spirits, which many people wrongly think originated with the Rosicrucians, but were probably reintroduced by Paracelsus himself. The first Rosicrucians practiced alchemy in a laboratory. The chemical wedding of Christian Rosenkreutz is a major work, which clearly makes reference to this. And now current day Rosicrucians, Rosicrucianists uh, focus on spiritual alchemy, i.e. that alchemy is about changing the self and that this is the real meaning of the Philosopher's Stone. According to the early manifesto, the Rosicrucians were a secret order. Their members believed or could, or, or could demonstrate healing powers that were seen as a gift from God. As indeed do I. In the outer orders, these powers are explained by Egyptian mysteries and again differently in the Hermetic order. So the interpretations by practitioners of Eastern religion state that reincarnation can process can happen in an interchangeable way with animal, vegetable and even mineral kingdoms. Uh, this is the theory of transmigration or meta, 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 metapsychosis. Indeed, some Kajawans believe exactly this. However, according to Rosicrucians, as stated in the Western wisdom teachings, uh, the Eastern sacred teachings do not support an inferred belief in transmigration, a meaning that each wave of life has an independent evolution process and each one is at a different stage in its evolutionary path. For example, according to the Rosicrucians, 
uh, mineral life is the first and lowest form of spiritual evolution from the earth. Then comes plants with actual life, then cold-blooded animals and warm-blooded, and finally humans. And, and even though I don't articulate this, I, I, I guess such thinking has had an impact on myself as well. Um, this is called the Rosicrucian Cosmo Conception. In practice, the beings belong to each life wave, either evolved through the work of the individual spirit or yet evolving under a group spirit, have a different state of consciousness and have acquired more or less subtle bodies according to the development stage of each life wave. Again, something that is somewhat incorporated into my own thinking. They see the world as too greedy and materialistic and see spiritualism as its antidote. Maybe this is the real reason why Rosicrucians are also the target for the, and I can't say the word, so sea theories uh, that I've been somewhat dismissive of. Whatever the truth about Rosicrucians, they're part of the rediscovery of the hermetic knowledge that came back to Europe during the Renaissance from the Islamic world. Uh, to our modern interpretation, their beliefs may seem unscientific and even anachronistic. Uh, but during the Renaissance, these ideas were seen as modern, exciting and progressive. Indeed, there's some evidence that the Royal Society in England was originally a Rosicrucian organisation. And certainly within its archives are papers by Sir Isaac Newton, which would seem to support this view. And many of the beliefs are similar to those found in theosophy. And therefore also to myself. Indeed, many modern-day Rosicrucians suggest that knowledge originated in Atlantis and was passed down through via Egypt, although I, I personally don't particularly see it that way. And of course, this, this largely reflects the similar antecedents that we all have. As I say, not that I really believe they were handed down by the Atlanteans, although sometimes I do have to admit I consider a refined version of this. Well, I really hope you've enjoyed this vlog. And if you have, can you help me out a little? Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and then you'll be notified of future vlogs. But also hit the like button and make a comment. Uh, because these seem to be what determine the um, YouTube algorithm. And I I'm being really punished by it. So whatever help I can get from you is, is so appreciated. It really is. I'm, when I started this, I was going to do it, uh, this, this section. The real magic of Java I was going to issue maybe t every two, three months. Now it's, it's happening maybe every two or three days. So yeah, if you hit the bell, you'll hear about it. Um, and thank you so much. Thank you for listening. Really heartfelt thanks.